The 14th of this series on simultaneous equations looks at the use of Gaussian elimination for finding a matrix inverse. The previous videos then demonstrated that Gaussian elimination is an efficient mechanism to change a matrix form AX equals B into rho echelon form. And this video looks at whether an equivalent approach might be an efficient method for determining a matrix inverse. The simple change we're going to do here is to write a matrix identity. So we're going to write AX equals I and that will imply that X has to be the inverse of A. <coughs> we note that the right hand side is now a matrix not a vector because the right hand side is the identity matrix. So we're trying to solve AX equals I which implies x equals a inverse, by using matrix multiplications on the left. So we're going to say ax equals i implies that dax equals di, obviously if d is full rank. And this is the same as in the previous videos. We could equivalently do lots of pre-multipliers, fed ax equals fedi. And you'll find the end point is if I can find and series of pre-multipliers onto A, which gives me the identity, then these pre-multipliers must be A inverse, which will end up being my X. Now, the left-hand pre-multiplier acts on both A and on the right-hand side matrix I. So the same as in the previous video on Gaussian elimination, I'm going to form an augmented matrix A stacked together with I, the identity. And then if I write D into this augmented matrix, it's the same as saying DA augmented with D. And it should be clear that if we can find a D so that DA equals I, then D must be A inverse. So what we're going to do next is use the same conceptual steps as for the Gaussian elimination to solve linear simultaneous equation. First, we create the augmented matrix. Then we use row and column swaps to exploit existing zeros. Then we use row operations to make the lower left triangular equal to zero or a row echelon form. And now there's an additional few steps. We also use row operations to make the upper right triangle equal to zero. And then we scale the diagonals to make them unity. And then the right part of the augmented matrix will become the matrix inverse. So choosing our row operations, this is the same as for simultaneous equations. The basic principle is to eliminate one variable at a time. So first of all, we choose row operations so that all the coefficients in the first column should be zero except for the top row. And then we look at the second column and we set all the coefficients in the second column to be zero except the top two rows. And then we look at the third column and we set all the coefficients in the third column to be zero except the top three rows. Now, having got there, having done that for all the columns, next we look at row operations which will make the upper triangular matrix zero. And again, we can look at one column at a time. And finally, once we've made the matrix diagonal, we choose row scalings to make the diagonals unity. And this will all be apparent after we've done a few examples. So here's the first illustration. You can see we've got a matrix A times an unknown matrix X equals the identity matrix. So the key point here is we've got a matrix on the right hand side. And if you look at our augmented matrix, you'll see it's A augmented with I. The first step then is to put zeros in the first column. So we do that with this row operation. Row 2 becomes row 1 plus row 2. And now you can see we've got a zero down there. Next, we want to get a zero in the top right. So there's a row operation that will do that. And now you can see we've got a zero here so that our left-hand part of our augmented matrix is diagonal. Now what we want to do is make the diagonal components 1. So we divide by 5 throughout. And you can see now this bit here is the identity matrix. And that means the bit on the right has to be the matrix inverse. Second illustration then. 
So again, we form our augmented matrix by packing A next to I. So we've done that there. And we start by creating zeros in the first column. So there the row operations we've used, and you can see with those row operations, we get zero in the first column. Now we say what row operation will give me a zero in the second column. So there we have it, and you can see now we've got our lower triangular form. But next we need to create zeros in the top right part of the matrix. So here we're showing you what we've got so far, so there's the zeros in the bottom left. So what we're going to do first is create zeros in the top row. We're going to focus on that two term. And you see now we've got a zero in part of the top row. Next, we're going to look create zeros in the third column using these row operations here. And now you can see that my matrix on the left is a diagonal matrix. And so finally, I choose some scaling to make those diagonal terms one. And what does that tell you? The bit that's now on the right is your matrix inverse. And a final illustration. So again, we form this augmented matrix by putting A next to I. We create zeros in the first column with a row operation. So you can see we now have zeros in the first column. We create zeros in the second column with a row operation. So now we have this lower triangular form. And next our objective is to create zeros in the top right hand part. So this is where we've got to. So next we choose a row operation which will create zeros in the top row. So there it is. And now you see we've got a zero here. And then we choose zeros, sorry, row operations to get zeros in the third column. And there we are. And again you'll see that this matrix is now diagonal and then we scale the rows to get the identity and now this matrix on the right is our matrix inverse. So the summary. Gaussian elimination can be used to find a matrix inverse. This involves finding row operations which force a matrix to become the identity. The product of the implied left-hand multipliers is the matrix inverse. However, this falls out immediately by doing the same series of operations on an identity matrix. In general terms, doing such row operations is far more computationally efficient than finding the adjoint, which you'll remember from a few videos ago.